Thank you so much for joining me for Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. You guys know who I am. I'm Dr. Angela Chester. And you know what I like to do on my show? I want to enlighten, inspire, and empower you to become your best self. Now, Scripture reminds us that the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. And that's what we want you to do today. Be on fire for my guest. His name is Anthony Lambert, and we will be talking about his book, The Hope and Joy That Discovering God Gives Our Lives. So go on, get comfy, get cozy, get your coffee or get your tea, because we are about to get started. Hello, Anthony. Thank you so much for joining me here today on Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. Uh, hello, there. pleased to thank, meet you. Thank you for being here. Now, we have a little tradition here, and that is we allow every guest to come on and introduce themselves. Uh, just tell us a little bit about who you are. So that's my first question. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. What makes you, you? <clears throat> well, I'm 80 years old, uh, and I've had a rather torrid life. I wrote this book uh, to sort of thank God for the constant help that he's given me throughout my life. Um, I was born in Indonesia uh, uh, to a wealthy family, uh, but we were uh, caught by the Japanese uh, in the Second World War, and uh, we were interned for three and a half years in a Japanese prisoner of war camp. Uh, my parents, as I said, were wealthy when I was born, but they virtually lost everything in the prisoner of war camp. The only thing that was spared was our lives. We all got through alive, whereas a lot of other families that went into the prisoner of war camp lost one or more, or more members of their family. Um, we were repatriated in Australia um, and the Red Cross looked after us. We didn't even have any clothes or anything, but they gave us medical care and attention and nursed us back to health. Um, mm -hmm. I, 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 I've had a rather checkered sort of background. I, I won't go into all the details. Yeah. It's, sort of so well, it's pretty lengthy. Yeah. Mm. Being an author, is that something that you've always wanted to do, or did you find that this was simply the best way to uh, share your work? No, I, I, I never thought I'd ever be an author, but because God has helped me throughout my life, uh, I wanted to repay him and sort of share my story with my fellow life travelers to, to hopefully encourage them and and have them realize that God is available to all of us and that if we call on him, he will help us throughout our, li throughout our lives. And uh, I shared my story in the book of what actually happened and how God helped me. And I hope that might inspire other people to realize that God is available for them to help them. Mm -hmm. Now, the title of your book, The Hope and Joy That Discovering God Gives Our Lives, why did you think that those words were the, the proper way to describe your work? Well, you, it's virtually exactly that. Uh, in my own life, when I appreciated that God was there and that he was, in fact, helping me, uh, it gave me great joy uh, in that particular discovery. So that's that's where the title of the book came from, the hope and joy that discovering God gives our lives. That's what happened to me in my life, and that's what I've tried to share. Mm -hmm. I like that. Now, I always ask this question to give um, everyone an idea of who... Um, of how, what age group is appropriate for this book, and I ask it this way. Would you say that your book is, uh, someone in high school is, is able to follow along with the storyline, or do they need to be a little bit older, college age uh, or and above? It's available virtually to anybody. Uh, an intelligent young child, uh, like six, seven or so, would I think already get the essence of what I'm trying to say in the book. Uh, right up into like an old grandpa or something like that who was sort of in their 70s or 80s. The book is, I think, available 
and would help anybody who wants to read and reflect on the content. Mm-hmm. Thank you for, for that clarification. Now, when it comes to the reading of the book, many times an author will construct the book to help the reader along the journey, to guide them, if you will, and set the path out very plainly for them. Would you say that your book is one that we should read from cover to cover, literally just page after page, or more so in chapters where we should make sure we read chapter one before reading chapter two? Or is it reader's choice? I think it's reader's choice. Uh, Each of the uh, chapters in the book has a a slightly different meaning and a different episode like in my life, but each of those is sort of self-contained. One doesn't automatically follow from the other. It's good to read the book from start to finish, but uh, anything that's meaningful to the reader, I mean, they can pick that out at any time and reread it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, I always give this disclaimer, and that is when we talk about the book, I'm never going to ask you to tell us, you know, how the story ends or to give away the the really great parts that you've you've, um, uh, included in the book. With that being said, can you tell us a little bit about uh, the the way that the storyline goes, uh, of course, without without giving it away? And why was it important for you to construct the story in that manner? Okay. Well, first of all, I've tried to um, elaborate on the existence of a God. Uh, A lot of people, like atheists and so, don't believe in God. Okay? So I've tried to sort of, um, by logical argument, show, A, that, that, that there is a God, that this God created our world and indeed our reality, and that he is available to us to help us in our lives. Uh, That was the sort of construction of the book, and that was sort of the message that goes through the book. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, does when you were putting the the story together, when you were still in the uh, process of determining, you know, what bits and pieces you would include in the story, did you have any moments where um, it was difficult to choose um, what parts you would include, or uh, if you had written a lot, if if it were uh, this needs to be edited, uh, there there's a process that every author has to go through in determining what to keep, what to exclude, when to add, when to take away. Did you have such a process? I, I did indeed, yeah. But the the, the thing is that um, the book is a reflection of my life and how God helped me in my life and how God is help is available to all of us if we wish to call on him. So that's the essence of the book, and chapters in it, uh, the arguments that are there, and, 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 and the narration of what's sort of put there is all in support of that. Um, I didn't uh, change uh, horses in midstream and go from one thing to the other. I knew the essence of what I wanted to say, And uh, I've written this book and rewritten it. It took me about seven years to write it because I kept reviewing it and trying to make it more pertinent uh, and so more helpful to to any possible reader of the book. You know, uh, that is not the first time that I've heard an author say that, is that the the book is ever-changing, uh, twofold with what you said, for the reader as well. The same thing, I think, um, when we're reading scripture, that where we are in our lives at that particular moment, we have a particular understanding. Uh, and as we grow and mature, uh, so will our understanding of scripture. And it sounds like um, that's the same thing with, with the book, that you are trying to make sure that it is it is ever present and that it is as current and as informative as it could possibly be and I, I like that you're doing that now for for so many folks there is a a certain definition that they have of the word hope as a breast cancer survivor I know that I had a particular understanding of what the word hope means when I read it in in the Bible I have an understanding of what hope means what definition or, or what expression were you trying to share uh, in your book when you were talking about the hope aspect 
Well, just that we're not alone. Uh, we face, every one of us faces different trials in our lives. Um, and, and sometimes you tend to be overwhelmed by those trials and you feel despair and hopelessness. But I've tried to point out that at those moments, if you just reflect inside yourself and call on God and ask for his help, he will help you and he will support you through these very difficult moments that you have in your life. And that's, that's the essence uh, and one of the main purposes like of writing the book. Uh, the main purpose of writing the book was because I felt an obligation to God for the help that he's given me in my life. My life has been a, a checkered mess of all sorts of dramas and through every one of those dramas, um, uh, God has helped me. Uh, it started out with being in turn in a prisoner of war camp. I had a child that was profoundly handicapped. I had another child that got into drugs. Uh, I've had many close calls in my life, but throughout all of that, God has helped me and I've tried to share with the readers of the book that as God helped me, he is available to help each and every uh, person that reads the book. Mm -hmm. I I love that sentiment. You know, there's there's always going to be that person out there that is going to be the naysayer or the, the hater or the person who says, I hear what you're saying, but I don't think that applies to me. Or, uh, well, Anthony, you don't know what I've done in my life, and I don't know if, if God can can be there for me. For the person who is having a tough go at it, uh, what words of encouragement? do you have for them? Well, <clears throat> the thing is, I've tried, out, tried to point out the power that God has. That's why I started the book with, first of all, trying to prove, number one, that there is a God, that atheists have got it all back to front, um, and that a, a God does exist, uh, and that he created our world. Uh, now, if you imagine an entity that exists and created our world and everything that's in it, uh, are you, I think you would imagine an all-powerful, massive, wonderful sort of person uh, that, that, that could do that sort of thing, that had that sort of power. So therefore, if uh, the reader of the book is feeling helpless in that, but then he thinks, hey, wait a minute, is a wonderful, powerful person that may just be able to help me. And then he prays to that person and that person actually does help him. That's the purpose of the book, eh? I love it. I love it. Well, listeners, don't you go anywhere. It is time for us to take a very short break, but we will be back in just a few seconds as we continue to speak with Anthony Lambert about his book, The Hope and Joy That Discovering God Gives Our Lives. Of course, it's available on Amazon or where books are sold. We'll be back right after this. Discovery, not just a sec. What would it look like if we listened more? Could the right voice, the right set of words, bring us all just a little closer, get us to open up, even push us further? It could if we took the time to listen. The most inspiring minds, the most compelling stories. Download Audible and listen for a change. We are back. Thank you so much for joining me for Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. I'm your host, Dr. Angela Kester. My guest is Anthony Lambert, and we're talking about his book, The Hope and Joy That Discovering God Gives Our Lives. Now, Anthony, my next question for you is, uh, for many of the uh, authors that I've spoken with, they've had to do some research 
to find those additional bits of nooks and crannies of information, of wisdom, or of scripture that they wanted to share uh, in their book. Did you have to do uh, any research for your book? The research virtually that I did is a result of my Catholic education. I was, I was raised in, in Catholic schools and they taught religion. And uh, the basic essence of uh, 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 um, talking about God and what he's done and what's in the Bible and so forth uh, was taught to me like in Catholic schools. Uh, but then my own personal experience and the dramas that I've gone through uh, reinforced what I learned in the schools and sort of created my philosophy and deep felt belief uh, in God and prompted me to sort of write the book. Uh, but as far as um, actual research and uh, delving into different uh, uh, philosophies and uh, different techniques, I, I've done very little of that and I didn't do a lot of that in the book. The book virtually is a sharing of my personal experience in my life uh, and pointing out that the help that I received is available to each and every one of us. So, yeah, that, that's the story with the research. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. I think that uh, as we grow and mature simply as human beings, I, I think that we start to uh, realize that all of the all of the fluff, all of the other stuff uh, that people say it isn't really important. It's about our personal relationship with God, and and once we are given permission to have that personal relationship, then I think that the, the world really opens up and and you realize how awesome and amazing God uh, really is, that it's not just um, a particular story that someone else has shared, but now that you get your own, you get your own personal stories. And I, I, I love that. I love that. Now, I want to shift gears just a little bit with you and ask you some process questions. Um, we have a really big uh, following of aspiring authors out there that are so uh, empowered by uh, successful authors, and, and they love it when I pick your brain. So I'm going to ask you some of those questions. One that I ask of everyone who's on is about how they chose to uh, publish their book. Every author has to decide. Do I self-publish? Do I use the professionals? Or do I pitch my book to a publishing house? How did you determine which way you would publish your book? I just went for self-publishing because um, uh, <clears throat> I didn't approach any uh, major book publishers or anything like that. I thought uh, there's plenty of self-publishers about and I thought I'd get the book published and get it out there and hopefully start helping uh, some of my fellow live travellers uh, with with the book, you know. But uh, that's that's the story of the publishing of the book. It was self-published, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm finding that more and more people are realizing this gem of a tool that is available to them, and that is the self-publishing. Uh, there are some very successful uh, self-published authors out there, and uh, it, it really does, like you said, it is an avenue in which you can use to really make sure that people get your information information uh, with, with no delay and, and you don't lose any control over your work as well. So I, I really like that. Now, when you finally uh, held that final copy of the, or I should say, uh, you, you're done with all of the work, you're finally done with all the work and you're holding the first copy uh, of your book in your hands, how did you feel in that moment? Well, <clears throat> I was pleased to see my thoughts sort of put in a book and in black and white, you know. And also, it was a bit of a relief because, as I said to you, my motivation in writing the book was to try to at least in part repay God for the help that he's given me by sharing my good fortune with God with my fellow life travellers. So when the book was actually published and that, I, I felt, oh, well, I've done my little bit for you, my Lord, and uh, uh, I hope that uh, 
you'll accept what I what I offer you, and and it was like a bit of a feeling of relief that way. Yes. Yes, I can. I can definitely. I can definitely understand that, especially when you feel um, that this is something that you have been purposed to do that that has really been placed upon your heart. So I, I definitely understand that. Now, when when you are uh, writing for for many authors, there is um, an environment in which you find that you are most productive. Some will say, I need it to be really quiet. Others will say, oh, the hustle and bustle of, you know, the day really doesn't matter much to me. Some need quiet. Uh, some uh, like to write first thing in the morning or at the end of the day. Uh, what was your writing environment like? Well, as <clears throat> so I went around in my daily life and, and, you know, God did some little thing for me and I realized that, I sort of, oh, I better get on with writing my book, and I sort of uh, set aside like a couple of hours every now and again to to write uh, uh, sections of the book, and then um, uh, after I'd written them, sort of sometime later I'd review them and try and rewrite it and try to make it a little bit clearer, you know. But uh, I didn't have a, a writing regime or writing uh, pattern or strategy. I, I just wrote the book as the spirit sort of moved me, um, and I, but I tried to get it done. I, I, I didn't want it to carry on for years and years and years. As I said, the book to took me about seven years to write with the reviews and everything that I did with it, uh, and I was glad when I when I wrote it, and I was certainly glad, uh, as as you say, when I got the first uh, published. Uh, um, version of the book, uh -huh. you know, and I, that, uh, uh, that. that's the way yeah. it worked, yeah. Right. And, you know, when, for, for so many folks, I'm, I'm finding that when I ask these, these sets of, of questions here and, and they follow up with me, not all do, but some follow up and they say, you know, thank you so much for asking that particular question uh, because that's the bit that I needed. And you said something very important there is that it wasn't necessarily about having a, you know, a regimen or anything like that. It was, it was more so just writing, just making sure that you are writing something every day. And I think someone yeah. needs to hear that, that they have permission not to have to follow a particular outline or do it at a particular time of day, but just make sure that they are writing something each and every day. That is that is so important. Thank you for and that's why that's why I ask those questions because uh someone's gonna get an epiphany off of that. So I love it. I love it. Now, for for this particular book, um, I find that the title alone is inspiring. Uh, I would definitely uh, pick it up uh, on the shelf and, and take a look through to see if there were any bits and pieces that really jumped out at me. With that being said, do you think that you... Um, left breadcrumbs along the way or, or bits of wisdom along the way uh, in the book to help the reader on their journey from start to finish? Well, well I think so because the, the good bits in my life where God sort of helped me and inspired me, really helped me, that's the things that I've sort of tried to share, you know, and it was God's help to me. Um, but in, in writing that book, uh, as I said, I tried to start out to make it logical by, first of all, proving that a God exists, that he created our world, and indeed he created our reality. And in the book, I share the content of my life in relation to God. Uh, and I, I, I looked into the... Uh, uh, effect of life like what is life all about and what is death what's the effect of intelligence and attitude to life and what about evil in the world uh, I looked at all those things and I also included like as I said I had a profoundly handicapped child she was blind deaf spastic and autistic and I wondered at the purpose of her life when she was born, the doctor told me she wouldn't survive more than a couple of days or at the most a week. Or, 
you know, but only God decides when we die. That child who the doctors gave at the most a week or a month to live, lived for 44 years. So only God decides when we die. And, and during the per through the course of her life, I wondered very much, what's the purpose of her life, you know? It, it, it's a horrible life uh, in that she's blind, deaf, spastic and autistic. But still, she was a little hero to me because with all those handicaps, there were periods, not often, but periods in her life when she laughed out loud and clapped her hands. And I thought, my God, with all the things that are wrong in her life, she can still laugh out loud and clap her hands. Isn't that marvelous? Uh, so that was sort yeah. of like the inspirations, and that's the sort of things I've tried to share, you know, that God yeah. makes things possible. And I believe God helped my daughter, Julie, through the very rough passages in her life and enabled her, like she was in a world of her own. She couldn't communicate. She, she couldn't feel love because of her autism or anything like that. But, but I think God got into her spirit and caused her to clap her hands and laugh out loud. That is that is such an awesome story, and and what a great way to to end uh, end the program. We are out of time, but you know what? That in itself was so powerful. You are you are so right. When when we could not get in, we as humans could not get in. God was in there with her, and I think that that is awesome. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us, uh, your life story, your your book with us as well. It is definitely uh, one of inspiration and empowerment. Now, before I let you go, can you remind everyone, please, of the title of your book? And if someone wants to reach out to you, um, how should they how should they do that? Can they email you? Oh yes, they can email me. That's uh, I'll, I don't have a website or anything like that, but I certainly have an email address which I can share with you. Do you want me to give you the email address? Yes, please. Yeah. It's Tony Lambert, T-O-N-Y-L-A-M-B-E-R-T, uh, 75 at gmail.com. Alrighty, thank you so much again for being a guest on the show today. And listeners, thank you for spending time with us here as well. We hope that we have enlightened, inspired, and empowered you again today. As always, may the Lord continue to shine his face upon you. May you receive his grace and his mercy in all that you do. Until next time, everyone, remember that you, you are blessed in the Lord. Have a great day, everyone. Mm -hmm.